Hello everyone and welcome to today's Kerbal Space Program video. Uh, and this mission is a big one, it's a very big one. We're going to be visiting every single planet in the game in one mission, in one launch, in one stage. This is a single stage to anywhere video, that's right. It's the spiritual successor to the single stage to everywhere video I made all the way back in ancient times in 2015. Uh, but unfortunately that video got taken down due to the copyright disputes between me and Sony Music, so that was a shame. But you know, it gives me a, a, a good a good excuse to sort of give uh, a reason for this video existing because single stage, to, uh, I don't know, single stage to anywhere videos they kind of get a rap, a rap as being kind of not that impressive. So I thought I'd make it at least somewhat challenging, engaging, I don't know, enthralling, varied by going to every single uh, planet in the game and landing on every single planet in the game, except for Eve, uh, Tylo, and Jewel. Uh, I have to get it out of the way. Uh, in fact, it's a funny story, those of you that watch my Planet Coaster series, which statistically is none of you, but um, uh, I, I did actually try and make this craft capable of landing on Tylo as well. I do have a variant of this craft that is Tylo capable, but I kind of wanted it to look cool as well as sort of being functional. And I think I did a pretty good job of making it look cool, I think. I mean, you guys are going to be the judge of this. I mean, maybe I've just been working on this so up close I've been blinded by glaring issues. But I know I like the way it came out. I kind of like the fact that the uh, the cockpit is kind of clipped into the um, the IRSU. ISRU? <laughs> I still don't know which way around those letters go. Uh, and just in general, I, 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 I'm quite happy with how this came out. And the Tylo, the Tylo variant is significantly more cumbersome, bulky. And I, I, I wasn't happy with it. So I thought, you know what, we'll just scrap Tylo and go with a design that I think looks... You know, this is a video. So, I mean, it would make sense to have a design that looks kind of, you know aesthetically pleasing from a video perspective. You guys, I mean, uh, you guys will let me know. I'm sure you'll let me know if you are unhappy with this. I'm easy like Sunday morning. But um, this is a big video. I mean, I can just, I can dress this up as a celebration because, I mean, for me, it's yesterday. For you, I'm hoping this goes out on Friday, so it'll be kind of Wednesday. Um, I hit 100,000 subscribers on, on Tuesday night. So that's a huge, like, I don't know how I can say this without being, sounding insincere, but I really mean it, it's like, it's amazing. I couldn't believe it. I didn't expect, that's like a hundred thousand more than I would ever have expected to have. So I, I'm thinking about, I, I did think about making kind of a, um, I don't know, I thought about making a dedicated video. A lot of people have asked me, can you do a draw my life? Or can you do, I don't know, a reaction video to your first upload or a Q&A or something. I, I thought about all of those. But, I don't know, I mean, I, I just feel like it's really cliche, and I, I always I, I, I always feel like I try and subvert some of YouTubers. Uh, some of the cliches exhibited by other YouTubers, um, I don't know, I think that just comes off as me being really self-depreciating, which then people think I'm fishing for likes, so it becomes, it comes full circle. But I, I, I don't like to, I don't, I don't think of myself as being a YouTuber, mainly because I don't like that, that term I associate with, um, negative connotations, let's just say. And also, I really... I still don't really think of myself as being... I mean, I, I'm I'm literally not that big compared to... I mean, in the tiny world of KSP, outside of the uh, the Scott Manley outlier um, phenomenon, the, uh, I'm a pretty big channel. But, I mean, in the grand scale of YouTube, I am barely even a stain on the wall. <laughs> I think uh, my social blade rank in terms of my channel size is still, like, 63,000. So, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm a very small channel, but, you know, in this little circle, and to me, to my tiny mind of having no other exposure to fame or anything, fame in the loosest possible sense of the word, um, it's a big, it's a big deal for me. So, I, I, I want to take this opportunity to say a big, a huge thank you, a huge show of gratitude to all of you, all of you that okay, joined my Discord, all of you that donate my Patreon every month. Uh, literally throwing your money away, but thank you, <laughs> thank you very much. Regardless of the support, it's been a real help actually. Um, financing some of the uh, the things for this channel, like you know, hard drive space and you know, better, getting better microphones for me to bash in the middle of commentaries, uh, things like that. So that's always been and like just in general, just in general. You guys being there has really been a, a driving driving force for this channel and just me as a person. I, I feel, I feel like YouTube is my favorite hobby, and I, I do. So, from the bottom of my heart, a big, heartfelt thank you. And now, to move things swiftly on, because some people out there probably just saw this in your suggested feed, and really don't care about me as a person or this channel, which is fine. You are watching this video, so, you know, 
You all look the same in the checkbook. No, that didn't mean that. <laughs> um, this is obviously a single stage to anywhere craft, and there's a beautiful shot of the takeoff there. Beautiful shot of the takeoff. So, didn't do a very good job on the ascent afterwards though, because I realised we were parked in front of this big slope. You saw Maxime earlier. We landed on the slope, I had to sort of dry, let it sort of drive, but you know, roll down the hill to a flat part of the terrain and then deploy the drills. All of that good stuff. Now, this video is quite long, and with the length it is, I'm still not entirely happy with how much stuff I had to cut out of it. That was just a reality of the situation, really. I mean, I thought about breaking this up into several videos, um, but I didn't because I, I hate it when YouTubers that I watch do that. <laughs> like, you watch a video thinking it's just going to be a video, I guess. I mean, why would you think that? <laughs> and then they're very like, hey guys, so check out part two coming next week. I'm like, why didn't you just tell me it was going to be two parts? And I would have just watched it, waited and watched it all in one go. I don't like it when people do unnecessary two-part things for, let's face it, we all know why they would do it that way. And, you know, I like to... I like to have good content first and foremost with ad revenue coming very much second. That's why uh, the, the KSP video I uploaded this... This sounds now like me desperately trying to virtue signal or whatever. I mean, it's not. I'm just... I don't care. I don't really care what you do, but this is what I do. Um, like the the the, uh, the Falcon Heavy video I made this week, it was using David Bowie's Starman, so Starman? Uh, Life on Mars. So I, I won't see any profits from that video. It all goes to Sony because apparently, even though David Bowie's dead, uh, Sony still work very hard on you know making sure that song still exists. So I guess they still are entitled to the money. This is another argument for another time. But uh, what are we doing here? Let's let's move the subject on. But yes, that's why I I think. Just, before we move on from the topic, I like I like it when videos are videos, and if a video can be one video, <laughs> video, 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 doesn't even sound like a real word anymore, does it? Um, then it should be. And so that's kind of, I like to emulate what I look for when I'm trying to look for YouTube channels to subscribe to, so that's kind of why this is one video. Hence why there might be a bit of footage, the footage is quite cut up in a lot of places to save time because I wanted all this to be in one video, and as a consequence of that, if I didn't want the video to be seven hours long, there would have to be quite a lot of bits cut out. So this is, consider this video more, and this mission more, sort of existing for the, for the entertainment value, if you can call it that, <laughs> rather than using it as a tutorial or a guide, because it really isn't. I had to cut out so much footage and stuff that it really, there's not enough here for you to really use as a substantial kind of method to learn how to play the game better. So with that said, um, what are we doing now? So, I mean, it's been going on for a while now. We are seven minutes, over, nearly eight minutes into the video. I haven't really described what this craft is or what we're doing, but you can see here we have all the science kit uh, kit here, bar the, uh, the ground scanners, you know, there's the big, I don't know what they're called, you know, the scanning kit for mining ships and things. But we haven't got any of that. But other than that, we, all, we have it all here. So we've got our seismic analysis uh, modules, we have our temperature gauges, our science juniors, mystery goos, gravity scanners, atmosphere analysis units and barometers. Did I cover them all? And of course we've got our lab module as well. So the lab is there to clean, we can use it to clean out the science juniors and mystery goose. We can continually use them in every single planet, uh, planet's sphere of influence and all of that. So we can get lots and lots of science. We can also use the lab to do research and enhance the science points we're gaining. I, um, I didn't actually need the science though because this is a completed save game. For all intents and purposes, I have the entire tech tree unlocked. So there was no motivation to really get all of the science. So I'm mainly kind of showing you uh, from an artistic standpoint, I guess, you, how you could use this ship. I mean, it's in the description if you want to download it. How you could use this ship to gain science from anywhere, really, because it's capable of every single planet and moon, like I said, except for Eve and Tylo. But I guess it can do Eve and Tylo in a way. Actually, not Tylo. Um, but it could do Eve because it could land on Eve, and then it's got a probe course. You could land it remotely and then just use it to sort of transmit the data back using the aerials on board. So that's always a... A good thing, because you can't really do, realistically, you can't really do an EVE return in a career mode unless you've got the whole tech tree unlocked anyway, because you basically need the vectors or like the, basically the high powered engines which require a lot of science to unlock in the first place. I mean, I guess you don't need some of the tiers, but I mean, people that, if you're attempting EVE, you're probably in the end game anyway, so I, I didn't really feel it would be necessary from a kind of usefulness standpoint either. I'm getting a bit of, I'm, I'm getting a bit sidetracked here, um, there, there's, so, um, what are we doing now? We're going to Moho. 
That was what I wanted to talk about, actually. Moho, if you're designing a single stage to anywhere, or doing a grand tour at all, Moho will be the limiting factor for your ship. It is by far the hardest place to get to, aside from Tyler and Eve, obviously, but those may as well be in a different ball game. Um, you basically have to design your ship from the ground up with Eve and Tylo in mind <laughs> to do those places. Um, but Moho requires a huge amount of Delta V. In fact, it, and it's very difficult to get to and do the encounter right. Essentially, you have to adjust your orbit around the sun to be matching Moho's when you encounter it. There's no point encountering it from just a kind of solar equatorial orbit because it will take way too much fuel to circularize. So I kind of did this in stages. I did some burns at Eve Periapsis. I did a lot of mid-course corrections. I tried to show as much of the useful stuff as I could in this video. So you can see now our circularization burn is very, very low for a Moho, Moho encounter. Usually you're looking at kind of 1500 to 2000 uh, meters per second plus to circularize in Moho. So you can see how much maneuvering I had to do beforehand to actually get an encounter like that in the first place. Like I say, Moho is a very difficult. Don't kick yourself if your ship can't get to Moho, basically. It's going to take a lot of practice, and like I say, like I was saying earlier, I wanted to, I tried to show as much of the useful footage as I could in this video, but there was so much. This part of the mission took the longest by far, because it was mainly just trial and error. Me starting at EVE, just trying for about an hour, giving up, and then quick loading, trying again, quick loading at various different points in the save. It got to the point where I had over like two hours of footage to sift through, and realistically I just, I wanted to get this video out for Friday because I like having a KSP video each week, especially on the week where I get 100,000 subscribers, so I kind of had to sort of improvise. I couldn't, I couldn't find every single aspect of the, of the bit, of the sort of the link to Moho, but I kind of showed the bare bones of it, and you know, we had over 5,000 meters per second in gilly orbit, so it's not like this thing didn't have enough fuel to get here in the first place. So, I don't know, take it for what you will. The most challenging parts of Moho are getting here, but landing on it as well. Mo don't underestimate how much Delta V Moho takes. It takes nearly a thousand meters per second to land on, and it also takes a lot of, it takes a high thrust weight ratio as well. The nuclear engines weren't sufficient alone in this craft. I mean, this, to be fair, this craft has a very high drive mass, so the nuclear engines are pretty pathetic. But even for getting into orbit, you can see we've got a huge amount of oxidizer because the nuclear engines don't have enough thrust, so we've got some chemical rockets. I mean, should I should I maybe talk about the design of this craft a bit more? I haven't really touched upon it that much, other than the fact it's got all the science, all of the science gear, and it's got um, a science lab, and I'm, I'm sure you've worked out as well. It's got the mining unit as well, the biggest drill and the biggest IRSU, ISRU unit. I will look that up at some point if I have to pause this. <laughs> if I have to pause the edits during this, but usually I do my commentaries in one take because I'm lazy. But if I ever have to do any cuts, I will look this up. So maybe I'll. Maybe you might hit whatever. <laughs> then, so we've got all the science. We've got a we've got a ridiculous amount of solar panels. That was mainly for the Elu and Jewel aspect of this mission because, you know, solar panels are very very ineffective at that kind of distance. So to supplement the solar panels, I've got quite a few RTGs off the top of my head. I think I've got four, which actually turned out to be enough to just do the whole mission. I didn't really need any solar panels at all, but you know. I think it looks kind of cool having all those solar panels there. I mean, at first I thought it looked a bit ugly, but it's grown on me. Maybe it's Stockholm Syndrome, who knows. So yes, we've got all the, as so I've talked about the science gear, the mining equipment. Uh, we've got a lot of liquid fuel um, tanks. That's what's inside the big fairing. Just lots of liquid fuel tanks, but the fairing just makes it look a bit, a bit more aerodynamic and a bit more aesthetically pleasing as well. And we also have, which we've got four nuclear engines, which provides us a lot of thrust with the most efficient engine in the game. But we've also got, uh, well, aside from the ion engines, just a few nitpickers that will bring it up. We've also got some um, aero spike engines as well, just because they are far more efficient than the rapier engines in closed cycle mode are. And uh, they just ha they just assist in like little bits of thrust that we need when we don't want to ex necessarily expend huge amounts of fuel on, 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 you know, closed cycle rapiers. So we've done Moho. Now we're just going to land on Gilly on fumes. And ladies and gentlemen, this is a big moment for me. That's right. This channel has once again exceeded all expectations, because that's right, Matt Lown is now the first person ever to crash land a ship on Gilly. Thank you very much. I will take that as a, as a huge honour, guys. Thank you so much. So, any, yeah, so we're going to refuel on Gilly. We could just skip through the refueling. I mean, I, I haven't really been showing much of the refueling process anyway, because it's pretty boring. I just put the drill in the ground and press mine and just sit there for a bit and watch it fill up. Because we've got the biggest drill and the biggest IRSU, ISRU, 
um, in the game. It doesn't matter where we land, even if we've got the lowest ore you know, we could possibly get, we would still be able to fully refuel our tanks. Unless I just got stupidly lucky and the game has changed since I last looked it up. But that's why we've got the big drill and the big convertitron. You know, that's what we're going to call it now, the convertitron. That's why I've got the biggest drill, biggest um, convertitron, just because then it took all the stress out of having to pick a good landing spot or needing to get, you know, auxiliary satellites in orbit around each body to, you know, scout out a landing site. Um, but yeah, so I think that's pretty much the ship covered. We've also got that little bit of that little landing gear thing at the well, the little landing gear at the end. That's just because most of the planets, I mean, certainly Juno and Leith and I guess Kerbin, that have atmospheres, and all the others will be landing in a vacuum, so we'll be landing basically on our tails. So we've got that little leg just to absorb the uh, the brunt of the impact, and you know it's got a bit of shock absorption. It lets us you know touch down nicely, and that was Minmus. We've just landed on Minmus, so I wanted to land. On, apart from Gilly, obviously, we're going to land on everybody just the once. And usually with SSTAs, single staged anywheres, it's a bit of a cliche to use uh, Minmus as the landing site. Oh, we can talk about here quickly, actually. So Mo if Moho is the limitation for the inner system um, and Tylo is the limitation for the outer system, Duna is definitely the limitation for the inner system. Not because it's necessarily hard or takes a lot of delta V, but because... It's very hard to land on. You've got to be. You've got to have a lot of wings. You can see I've got those Werner engines on the nose cone that are basically just there to facilitate the Juno landing. The atmosphere is so thin that wings have don't have very much effect. You end up having a huge amount of you know vertical speed drop off uh, or increase, I suppose. So it's very hard to land on Juno. So I wouldn't knock it. I wouldn't knock you. I mean, I very nearly in my original single stage everywhere. I very nearly didn't get the Juno landing nailed. Um, it took a I, I almost gave up on Juno and said, we'll just do a thing for a little bit. But I did persist. I don't know how I had the patience. Um, probably just whiskey got me through it. But <laughs> I don't know. Juno is definitely a limiting factor because it's so hard to land on. And you can see, maybe just quickly, my visual mods were disabled. That's because uh, for some reason, the visual mods were causing my frame rates to drop to sub 5 FPS, which is fine for places like Ike because, you know, it's easy. But Juno, when I was having to use the, you know, the... Uh, the aircraft controls and make sure my pitch was right and manage a lot of variations in speed and things. It became very, very difficult to do it at such a low FPS, so I had to disable the visual mods briefly. I think I had to do the same thing for Elu as well, because the mods I use um, add cryo volcanoes to Elu, and that just that would create a world of you know frame rate issues. But I've never had those issues before. So I don't know if it's something about this craft that causes it. If you guys are curious, by the way, the mod list is in the description. I know people are gonna ask anyway, but ju just for those of you that made it this far, 17 17 minutes, 40 seconds in. I don't know how you got this far, but if you did, then now you know. So, now we're getting to uh, uh, this planet here, which does exist. Um, let's not let's not pretend that that meme is funny anymore. It isn't. <laughs> uh, Drez is great. I love Drez. For this video, I considered landing in the canyon, but this is my, main, my primary KSB save, and for those of you with good memories, the elephants among you <laughs> may remember that I sent a base down to the the bottom of the Dres Canyon, and I was already having frame rate issues with this craft. I didn't want to go down to a place with uh, multiple, like hundreds of parts um, within the two kilometer physics radius. Uh, I just thought it would cause so many frame rate issues, and it would just be not. It would take too long to do, so we just we just land somewhere other than the Dres Canyon. But hey, if you want to see the, if you want to see me go to the Dres Canyon, I have two videos. You just type in Matt Land Dres. I'm sure they'll come up in the search bar, uh, in the search results. So yes, we landed on a bit of a slope, so I had to do a bit of a thrust up to get here. Anyway, I've just remembered what I was talking about when I was on Juno and got onto a massive tangent about Juno. It's become a bit of a cliche to, when you first ascend from Kerbin, people with SSTAs, they generally build a ship that can ascend from Kerbin and has enough fuel to just about land on Minmus, and then they can just refuel on Minmus and go from there. But I was like, no, I'm going to do it differently. I'm going to refuel on the Mun. Not that the Mun is that much I mean, the Mun is a lot harder than Minmus, but it's not like hugely difficult. I mean, at first I thought about refueling at Gilly, but that would have required precision and timing, neither of which I had, I didn't have the patience for that, and I really couldn't be bothered, so I'm like, let's just land at the Mun. But fun fact, if you have a Mun lander, uh, a Mun capable rocket, I should say, you have a, by default, a Gilly capable rocket. So that's often what I advocate for people as their first interplanetary mission. I generally say just send a probe to land on Eve because Eve is so easy to land on. It's the that's the the twisted thing about Eve. It's the easiest place to land on, but it is also the hardest place to take off from. 
Conversely, Tylo is very, very easy to take off from, but it's very, very hard to land on. That's why Tylo and Eve kind of are opposite sides of the yin-yang, although Tylo is also quite difficult to take off from. That's a whole other thing. Anyway, here we are in the dual system, so we're getting close to the end of our journey. Um, we only have two planets left. Well, I mean, dual would be its moons, um, which we're only doing uh, four of the five. And then we've got Elu as well. And I guess we've got to go Kerbin as well. Going back to Kerbin will be a challenging landing, I guess. So all that will be, all that, all of that will be to come. But here's a little touch down here. Laith is just such a nice place to visit, especially in a space plane, and especially one without all the stress of having to, you know, get back into orbit on our own steam. We can just refuel and have a virtually stress-free, stress-free ascent, knowing that you know we can just go to Bop or Pol which take very, very small amounts of fuel to get to, to recover all of our, you know, expended uh, liquid fuel and uh, oxidizer supplies. So, yeah, it's a pretty nice place to visit. So you can see I've been planting this flag on <laughs> each body. Again, I can't spend too much time talking about each landing because we've got so much to do. But I wanted to showcase there that we can board this craft in the absence of, uh, you know, being able to use our jetpacks. Uh, we've got a ladder there that can get our kerbals off the ground without the need to rely on jumping or jetpacks or anything like that. So just thought I'd showcase that. And then we're going to ascend from Eve. So we're going to point ourselves fairly shallow. Well, we're going to point ourselves fairly steep at first, then keep a nice uh, shallow ascent so we can do as much of the climbing using the uh, air breathing mode of the rapiers, which is by far the most efficient mode of any engine on this craft. And then we're just going to switch to the switch the rapiers off and use the uh, nuclear engines to finish our circularization and I think we might use a little bit of the aero spikes just to help kick us up into orbit but we don't need very much you can pretty much raise your periapsis to you know above the common line of lathe if you you know get your ascent right but again we had a very stress-free ascent you know we got a single stage to anywhere it didn't matter how inefficiently we did it and there were some beautiful I mean god I love this um this visual mod just as a tangent now Lathe looks beautiful. I really like the way, because Lathe always just looked kind of like a boring version of Kerbin, really, before. It was just sea and sand, and that was it. Whereas this mod kind of gives us this nice sort of turquoisey green uh, little hue to it. So I really do like this mod. Um, so again, in the description, if you want to look it up. But yeah, there's our Lathe orbit there. So we can just go ahead and get ourselves to the rest of the dual planet. So I'm doing a gravity assist to Val using Tylo which is entirely unnecessary and actually is more inefficient than just going straight to Val in the first place. The reason for this, though, there is a good reason for this. First of all, we can enter Tylo's sphere of influence. Like I said at the beginning of this video, this video is not just about getting science. It's about getting all of the science, <laughs> which means that we're going to be getting science from Tylo and from Joule. We have science from a uh, high Joule orbit, as, as I said, but we can actually do our Tylo gravity assist to get closer to Joule prior to our Val encounter, so we can get science from a space near Joule. Uh, well, you know, it's, that's what the science uh, windows of the game call it. I couldn't really be bothered to get closer to Tylo, though. I mean, I totally could have. I mean, look how much fuel I've got. You guys you guys know I could have got to Tylo if I, was, if I wasn't lazy, so if you guys wanted to do this mission yourselves, you could totally get to close to Tylo if you wanted to, but let's face it, Joule is a much cooler planet. Look at that. That's some great thumb thumbnail material right there. I haven't really thought about what the thumbnail of this video will be. Maybe I'll do like it from Lathe, so it'll be an homage to the uh, original single stage anywhere video, which is still one of my favourite videos. It's such a, it is such a shame that that got taken down, whatever. I'm not salty at all. Um, but yeah, we're going to do a quick burn, a quick retrograde burn to get our Val encounter there. Val is very similar to Moho in terms of how much fuel it takes to land on. It takes about 870 metres per second, give or take. The difference between Val and Moho, though, is that Val is very easy to get an encounter with. You basically, if you just get an encounter with Joule, it takes virtually no further fuel expenditure to get to Val, or at least encounter Val, because you can do various gravity assists of Tylo and Lathe to kind of chain, alter your orbit in such a way that you get an, a Val encounter. And the actual encounter we got here in this video was very inefficient, but you can just you know, tweak your gravity assists, get your encounter just right, so you encounter Val. So it takes almost no delta V to even circularize here. So whilst it takes a similar amount of fuel to actually physically land on it and take off from it, getting to it, which is the challenge of Moho, not necessarily landing on it itself, uh, Val is no nowhere near as bad. Uh, you know, as Moho, it's nowhere near as challenging. That's just my little divergence there. And I think Val 
I think it's even more underrated than Drez, because at least Drez has a meme going for it, right? That, oh, Drez is boring, no one visits Drez. No one even cares about Val. What's Val got? It's just a moon around Tylo, but it's not easy to land on like Paul or Bob, and it's not got any cool easter eggs like Bob does. I mean, I guess it does have one cool easter egg that I won't spoil, in case you guys wanted to find it for yourself. I don't know how you'd go. Oh, no, I guess they've added that to the game, the easter egg scanning, but whatever. But it's got a cool easter egg, but I mean, it's not that compelling. Certainly not compared to Bop's. And I mean, it's not as easy, like I say, it's not as easy to land on as Paul and Bop. And so if you're going to be landing on a difficult to land on body and jewel, you may as well, you know, make it slightly more difficult and land on Lathe, or even slightly -er more difficult and make yourself land on Tylo. Val just kind of is stuck in this limbo of not, not being that hard to you know, visit, but not being that easy to visit either. I mean, nothing in the dual system is that easy to visit, so... I think that might be why, and also it's not got that much interesting going on with it, because it's basically just a reskin of Minmus. It's basically Minmus, but with the challenge of Mun, as in, you know, the gravity of Mun. Yeah, I know Val is slightly harder to stand on than Mun, but... Yeah, I just kind of feel like Val is just the, the outcast of Kerbal Space Spring, if you could call it that. But you know what? I like it. I like Val a lot. It's kind of got nice cool mountains, but it's got big flat areas as well. I think it's... I ought to do more with Val. Well, actually, I do have big plans for Val that you guys will... Probably in like five years when I finally get round to doing it, but I do, I do have big plans for Val. That's all I'm going to say. But I'm hoping that Val will have uh, a more prominent um, uh, character. It'll have a more prominent prominence <laughs> on this channel in the not too distant future, hopefully. But first and foremost, I want to get... That's one of the things I want to do this year. Um, or this century. I mean, let's not, let's not you know restrict ourselves too much. At some point before I die, I'd quite like to um, finish that Discord space station challenge I promised in my Discord that I still haven't got round to. The reason for this, I keep meaning to do it on a live stream, but I'm having some internet problems recently, so I can't really feasibly do it on a live stream. So that will happen though. I haven't forgotten about Discord space station. Anyway, I mean, you know, this video will be around for, well, I mean, it might be out if you're watching this video a long time after it's uploaded, so this won't mean much to you. Uh, but this is this is Bop. <laughs> um, not much more to say about it really. It's um, Bop is the other kind of outcast child of Jewel because it's it takes more fuel to land on than Pole, and it's more boring than Pole, right? I mean, it's got a cool Easter egg, but in terms of the actual terrain and aesthetic, it just looks like a big gilly. Uh, in the same way that Val looks like a big Minmus, whereas Pole is quite cool, and we're getting to Pole in a minute. But I would recommend. Uh, using quick save very very liberally when going to poll because it's still it's still in 2018 current year argument still has this terrain glitch where you will just crash into nothing on the descent it just has a terrain glitch there's i, I was about to, I, you guys might think that i was going to offer an explanation that's because the way the game is coded but you know i don't i don't care <laughs> i don't know anything about programming but i know it has a terrain glitch so um you know Use caution when landing on pole, but once you're circularized, it takes a very, very tiny amount of it. It's easier to land on the Minmus. Not quite as easy as Gilly. It takes about 130 meters per second to, you know, land on pole and ascend from pole. And we've got these nice gnome hats, this terrain thing here. It's really, it really is cool. It's very underrated, I think, as a place to visit. Again, I guess because it comes with the challenge of getting to Jewel, and people that go and visit Jewel want to, you know, visit Lath or Tylo uh, over the more easy locations like Paul and Bop and Val, but there you go. Just ignore the clipping inside that rock, it doesn't matter, it's not important. Uh, and there we go, and that is the Jewel 5 conquered, except for Tylo, and for the pedantic among you, Jewel as well, because it is actually possible to land on Jewel, like land in, I would be doing the air quotes if I wasn't just a disembodied voice to you guys. Um, but you know, that kind of feels a bit glitchy really. I mean, I, 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 a Jewel air quotes again, landing. It's something I'd like to do at some point, but it just kind of feels a bit cheaty, right? That's why I don't like helicopters. Because <laughs> aeroplanes make sense to me, but helicopters don't feel like, they feel like they don't make sense. I'm like, well, there's no wings. How does it fly? That was a weird tangent and a half, wasn't it? So moving swiftly away from that uh, topic, we're getting our final planet encounter now to, uh, to Elu. Now, uh, you may have noticed throughout this video as a common theme, and uh, none of my None of my body encounters have been particularly efficient, and that's just because this thing has so much fuel um, that it's like you essentially have unlimited range because 
you know, it's got over 5,000 meters per second in a vacuum because, again, I had to engineer it to be capable of a moho landing, and that demands a huge amount of, you know, range. So once, if you can do moho, everything else is very, very trivial. So that's why I've been kind of going for just the most random, non-efficient encounters because, because I can, and I'll be able to refuel once I'm there, so who cares about being efficient? Uh, there's a little cryo-volcano just there for you, out of the corner of the screen. So that's kind of why some people might be wondering why I'm doing these weird like, oh, is that a is that a new way of encountering that planet? No, it's just a quicker way of doing it. I didn't wait for any I waited I didn't wait for any transfer windows in this video, aside from the initial Eve transfer window. And you know, I kinda of waited for a good window to get to Moho, but that a lot of that was trial and error to be honest. Mostly error. Uh, but all the other planets, no transfer windows are really anticipated. I just went and then <laughs> played with the manure nodes as and when I needed to. Um, knowing, knowing in, that I, I didn't need to worry about fuel expenditure, and there we go, our our final flag planting. Ah, there's a little shot on Eve, um, <laughs> Eve, Elu. So we can board ourselves on, you know, board, you know, place our crew report, EVA report, surface sample, all of that inside the command pod. And I can quickly show because this is the only place where any mining wouldn't work. It's gone now, but if there were any place that your mining ship wouldn't work, it would be Elu because. Uh, electricity generation with solar panels is so so poor out here but again I have the uh, RTG generators on here so those ended up rendering the solar panels completely obsolete they were essentially dead weight this ship could have had even more range if I just got rid of them completely but I do I'm old school and yeah I like to have the fancy that we have the solar panels in case of you know needing some backup electricity in the event that the RTGs fail but we didn't I'm pretty sure this mission would have worked without them, put it that way. Now, Jebediah, Bob, Valentina and Bill can get ready to end their long marathon of a flight by returning to Kerbin once again. So we can do some quick... So, I probably should have mentioned this, uh, 31 minutes ago, <laughs> at the beginning of this video, but I, what I... The, the system I had in place is we take some science from a planet or moon surface, and then we take some science from the orbit, from orbit around the planet or moon. Obviously, Tylo and Eve were exceptions. We just had to do it from space around them, as this, as is the case for Jewel as well. All the others, surface, low orbit. Those are the two locations. Again, you could maximize the amount of science you gain if you did this mission yourself by using the lab to its fullest extent. Because for what I'm using it for, we could have just you know, brought a... A scientist Kerbal with us because they can clean experiments now as well, I think. <laughs> uh, but you know, it's there to provide some research capabilities and yeah, you know, it looks cool as well to have us. It, it's kind of a cool thing because a lot of people ask me, can you build a space station that unpacks itself, gets into orbit around something, does lots of science, then repacks itself and then you move it to another planet, then unpack the station again. I'm like, well, this, this ship here has all the capabilities of a Kerbal Space Program station, right? Because it has all the modules a station could possibly need, apart from the surface um, resource scanners. Um, uh, again, we didn't need them because we've got drills and a convertitron and ore tanks and all that that a space station might not necessarily have anyway. So it's all besides the point. I feel like this is a much cooler solution to that request that people were sending me. So yeah, there's um, there's the atmosphere glitching out there. We can just skip skip ahead through that. I hope that it... What do you guys... I, I am always looking for feedback. Was this too jarring? I do... At the time of this video going live, I do still have the uh, the raw footage, so I can go ahead and re-edit and re-upload a, a long cut. When I say long cut, it will be long. Potentially without commentary, just a few hours. It would be, uh, it would be over an hour long, so I mean... For me, that would probably be too long. I mean, my Jewel 5 SSTO video was like 40 minutes. That didn't get many views. Whereas the uh, the one that was literally two minute, two and a half minutes is already at 40,000. And that was only uploaded a couple of days ago. So I'm sensing people prefer shorter videos. That's the general impression I'm getting from this. But prove me wrong if you want. I mean, I say, you guys prefer shorter videos. And we're already at 34 minutes in. So, you know, I feel like this is already, this is too long. I'm sorry, everyone. This was a mistake. But here we are doing some air braking, just to force our apoapsis down, doing some final crazy rolls right at the end to help bring that number down even further. You can see on the Kerbal Engineer readouts at the top of the screen what our apoapsis is. We want that to be kind of 70, I aim for sort of 75 kilometers as our target. Then we'll just circularize once we reach apoapsis, and then we can deorbit again to make sure that we encounter the runway. And we're kind of be coming in from a, a, a western orbit, so west to east, you know, that that kind of direction, 
clockwise. Is that clockwise? It's clockwise, isn't it? Yeah. Orbit, as opposed to the more conventional eastward orbit. But that's a. I mean, it, it's not a thing, right? Because we're coming, we're coming back from interplanetary space. Who cares? But there we go. Skipped. I skipped through talking through the entire re-entry. Um, but this was played at 100% re-entry heating for those who might be calling bamboozle at this point. I mean, we were entering from low carbon orbit, in which it's pretty difficult to re-enter in such a way that you're going to explode on entry. But you know, just for clarification's sake, if nothing else. And there's our space station. Then, so I, I, for you know, to celebrate 100,000 followers, I will probably. I am thinking about. Well, I, I will at some point when I can be bothered to get around to it. I will be uploading my save file because now. We've done everything. I wanted to wait until I'd done this mission, though, so we had, so I could say there are flags on every single body. Because although we didn't go to Tyler or Eve on this occasion, we do have. I have done it on other missions that would have been in this save file. So now we can say, without any shadow of a doubt, that we have places on. Well, that being said, I think I had flags on everybody, regardless. I'm now thinking, did I go to Moho on this save? I might have gone to Moho on a separate save. Anyway, doesn't even matter because now we've done it now. And I think because this was such a momentous mission, and it could potentially be the last ever mission that we do on this save file, and I'll start a new space program for the next 100,000. Um, so, you know, this is a nice little sound. There it is, all landed. There's the crew there, happy to be back home. Now, we could recover at this point, and to indulge you all, I will recover it, just so you can see how much of all the science we earned. And, you know, just have a 22,000 which, it could have been a lot higher if we'd used the lab to its fullest extent. Uh, the Space Center has flooded here, don't worry, it will be, I will notice. Uh, you guys don't need to point it out. And I think we don't need to revert it though, because we don't need the science, so we're going to leave it immortalized on the helipad on the vehicle assembly building. And I think that'll be a, a nice little sort of statue to commemorate a mission of this scale. I don't normally do missions of this sort of sky, size, because they take so long to make, but, you know, it's nice to do it every, every once in a while. So other than that, I do hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you once again from the bottom of my heart for 100,000 followers. And on screen there are some links. Uh, the top left is the uh, abridged music video version of this video that I probably should have advertised at the start of this, but whatever. Top right is my other single stage to anywhere video that may or may not be blocked for you, depending on where you are in the world. Uh, bottom left is my most recent upload, and the bottom right was specially chosen for you by YouTube's algorithm. So other than that, have a good day.